Hi, I'm Brian Lockett, and I'm going to be showing you in this video how to create a height map in a 2D program. Uh, in this case, uh, the GIMP. Um, it's, a, it's a very straightforward, very uh, simple way of producing a height map. Um, I think it, ha it has a lot of benefits to uh, this method rather than using a 3D program um, for the fact that you have a lot more editing tools at your disposal. Um, one main advantage is the use of layers. So you can create, you can literally just create layers of, upon layers of um, different features on your height map. I find that's very useful, especially when you're building something with a lot of uh, different strata. Um, or just you just want a very easy way to manage your, to plot out your height map. Okay, well, getting started here, I just want to show that I'm using, for, first of all, if you're using GIMP, you don't see this window set up as I have it here. I have it in single window mode, so you, most of you probably see your GIMP, something like this, in three parts. Well, I have, well, I'll just go down to Windows and single window mode, and it should, this should be your uh, one solid window. Um, just to show what version I'm using, I'm using 2.8.6, which I think is the most recent version. Okay, now I'm just I'm just not going to spend a whole lot of time on this um, method here, and I'm not going to make a very refined map. I'm just going to show some examples of the flexibility of 2D creation of the map. First thing you want to do, typically, you want to do is lay down your ground level. I have my background layer. I named it. You want to get into that habit, especially when you're dealing with more one-on-one -on -one layer. But um, I have my ground level, and it's white. Uh, I don't want that. I want to have a very flat, um, high, low level, lower level than this, uh, where white would show. So what I've done is I've imported the layer that we create, the uh, height map that we created in Blender. I'm going to sample colors from this. I'm going to sample this gray out here. I'm just going to borrow it. Um, uh, I'm going to go to the the uh, bucket fill tool here. <clears throat> I'm going to just fill this in gray, and I'm waiting for this to happen. Not quite sure why this isn't. I think I have to select it all. I wonder what's going on here. I'm going to select this. Click on Simple Merge. Let's try that. There we go. Okay. Yeah, excuse me. I'm not really familiar with using uh, GAMP very, very much. I'm going to go back to here. And now I'm going to just try. There we go. Okay, the ground level. The ground level is set. Okay. Um, another thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to go to my palette edit editor. Um, I have a palette here of grays. Now, how I got this is I went to the palette um, tab here. And if you don't see that, you can just go to Windows, Lockable Dialogs, and just choose your palette right here. And it should dock over here. I just went down to grays, and it has 32 very um, values. Um, you want to choose a level that's lower, lighter than this level here to raise your elevation. Now, uh, one thing I do I like about using layers is that it, it, it makes it very easy for me to create a feature. Um, I'm gonna first. I'm going to show this by creating a layer, holding down Shift, and I'm clicking this, and this will this will help you bypass this uh, new layer dialog here. This prompt. And with that, I'm going to, I'm just going to name this one Hill. Uh, hill. It's going to be a small uh, hill I'm going to make here. And I'm going to make that very simply by using the ellipse um, select tool. I'm going to draw out a little shape like that. I'm going to give this a bit of feathering. Maybe, now let's go 15. 
and this is going to give it a little gradual fade uh, as I fill it, in, fill it in, you'll see. Um, then I'm going to choose, go back to my palette here. I'm going to try to choose a level that looks lighter than my current color value here. Uh, I'm going to choose, uh, I think this looks light enough. I'm going to go back to my bucket fill tool. I'm just going to fill that in. And just right there, I have a a um, feature that will show up as a hill. Actually, what I have set up here, I have a um, I have a plane, a flat plane in Blender, subdivided, and I have it ready to test out my height map. So what I'm going to do here, just to show show my work in real time here. I'm just going to export this out. Also, I'm just going to save this. I'm going to go back to Blender. I already have this set up here to place a new height map here. And every time I make changes, I'm just going to hit this reload current image from disk, and that's going to refresh what I have. I got this. Uh, I got a displace modifier already uh, already ready. Now, when I, I do this, you probably won't. If you're not seeing the results immediately, what you, your problem is probably that your height is too low. So I'm just going to use the height we had previously, which is what I wrote down here. As you remember, it's 500 meters, and there you should see it. Very simple. I'm going to smooth this out. And if you want to draw the point home even more, I'm going to go to Render View. And you should let's see the texture. Or maybe I can just go to maybe rendering will show. Hmm. Well, anyway, I had a height. I had the uh, height material set to this uh, terrain, but um, I guess maybe it's uh, that's one thing you do have to uh, deal with uh, with the difference between two programs. There's a 3D editing program and a 2D editing program. Their values might vary differently. It might um, the height value information may be read um, differently. Well, well, anyway, I just I won't, I won't get too too much into this, but there's the result. I'm going to go and continue editing here. Okay, so I have a little, well, it's not even really a hill, uh, to be honest. As, if you want to make it a real true hill, let's uh, use a blend tool here. I'm going to go to radial. And I'm going to hold this out. I'm going to do the, that right there. Actually, I'm going to flip this. So you want the highest point to be in the middle, and you want the lower values to be out outward. So now, that I should have a little gradient, and you can adjust it as you like. Might be too fancy with it here, but there we go. Export it. We forgot to export. Go back to texture. It's gonna be under the uh, texture. It's not, it's not going to be a uh, uh, material texture. It's going to be under the uh, normal texture. And you do this, and there we can begin to see a little bit of the hill in there. Uh, maybe I can make it bigger, but you, you get the point. It's a very uh, very nice way to check your height map as you're painting it. Now, just to go back to the two, to the two uh, D here, one of the great things about it is that you can just you can just edit it directly. You can edit it however you like to have your. That was something I was looking for, but that's okay. Um, I was trying to select that, delete that from the um, selection, but um, I guess you have to choose it here. Well, anyway, um, you can you can do all kind of things here. I'm, I'm going to choose a level a little lighter than this one but a little 
Blender. Here we go. I'm going to go back to Blender. Actually, I forgot to save it. <laughs> Export it. Go back here. Update this. There we go. It's just that simple. Very nice way to work. And now I'm just going to not, I think you got the idea, but I'm just going to just do a few more examples here to just kind of drive the point home of how, just how much you can edit. Um, just how useful it is to have direct editing of the uh, features here. I'm going to invert this. I'm going to go to filters. Paint, we're going to go, uh, go to the blur and go to Gaussian blur here. And let's just choose the, uh, there we go. So I can see the results. I'm going to choose 10, I think. I'm going to blur that. And I'm going to zoom in using this navigator here. And if you don't have this, I have, it's not by, on by default. So I, I just go to dock and I use navigator. And you can get this here, which is very useful when you're zoomed in like this. And you can you can do all kind of detail work, move around. I want to blur this a little bit. I, th I think I just do this by hand. And I'm, I'm not using my um, wake my uh, Wacom tablet. I'm using just the uh, mouse. It's so simple. You can you, you don't even have to use Wacom tablets. I I prefer. And I recommend that you use it if you have one, especially when you want to uh, make um, very fine detail. But actually, um, for very general shapes, I recommend, you know, sometimes the mouse is preferred. Um, sometimes you don't want that tight hand feel, hand drawn feel. But, um, but, any, but anything you can do with the uh, mouse. You can do with the Lake Wacom um, stylus, but this is just just blurring this here, just kind of smudging it. Okay, now we'll hit one one here. Let's see all. Okay, um, I'm going to repeat the the Gaussian blur oh, just a little bit. Um, add a little bit more of that blur here. Okay. Hold on. Let's look that. Let's go export that. And then once we do that, I'll go back to Blender. Reload it. And you can see I made a little more of a gradual sh shift. Rather than a cliff. I mean, it's still a cliff, but it's, you know, it's more smooth. Some things you want to look out for when you're editing, um, this way, you want to watch out for your edges. That's uh, like right here, if you can see, it's got a little bit of a raise over here. So uh, it could be a, it could be a result of the height map. I'm not sure. But, um, but anyway, that's that's just showing you some of the uh, some of the workflow on creating height map in GIMP. Uh, well, I think what I'm going to do here also, I'm going to just recommend some other programs that are out there. There's one called Krita. Um, it's, it's a very solid program, um, particularly for Linux, but it's got a Windows version, and I think there's a Mac version in the works, but the Windows version is available. It's, a very, it's experimental, so it's very, it can be touchy and fussy at times, but I do find that I like editing height maps in it more than I tend to in GAMP. I'm not really familiar. I don't use GIMP a whole lot, but I do use it at times. But um, and even the program MyPaint is a free version, is a free software out there. It it supports layers. I like that it supports layers. The only thing it doesn't support is um, selection tools. It doesn't have any selection tools, but it's still a, another option. I have used it before. It's a, it's a nice option. But um, but anyway, that's that's all uh, for this uh, video here.